Hi, my name is AJ Smith. I'm a primary school teacher in London and I'm here today to talk to you about reading. I love physical books. I've always loved physical books. I love getting them as presents. I love buying them. I used to work in bookshops. I have shelf upon shelf of physical books. But recently I've moved from being a real physical pen and paper guy um, to being an almost entirely digital reader. Uh, that means that I've gone from reading physical books to reading ebooks. I've gone from printing out articles that I want to read on the train to reading them on my iPad or on my Kindle. Um, I've gone from taking notes in dozens of notebooks, uh, scraps of paper, <laughs> post-it notes, um, record cards, uh, the backs of envelopes, to um, actually having all my notes in one place easily accessible. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the kind of process that I go through when I'm reading for work and reading professionally. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of apps that I use to make that whole system, that whole reading ecosystem work. And I'm also going to talk to you about my knowledge base in Notion, which is something that I'm just getting started with now, but I can already see improvements in my professional life and just in reducing the amount of stress I have around professional development and around reading. So the first thing to talk about is the way that this reading system works, if you like. I don't really like thinking of it as a system, but there is a certain workflow to it. So firstly, you know, physical books are great. I love physical books, but I've moved mostly to reading ebooks on my Kindle. Um, that means that I can have everything in one place. So whether it's books, journal articles, blog articles, it can all be physically in one place, which is in my Kindle or um, on some of the apps that I use on my iPad or on my computer. OK, so the first bit of technology I want to talk to you about is this. It's called Instapaper. You've probably heard of it before or you might have used Pocket, which is very similar to it. Um, Instapaper basically takes articles that you want to read. Uh, blog posts, anything like that. It converts it into really simple text format. And then uh, what I really like is that it automatically transfers it over to my Kindle so that I can read it. So I'll show you how this works. You basically, you make an account and install a, a Chrome um, widget, whatever they're called, in a plugin. Uh, then say I'm browsing on Twitter and I see a blog that I want to read. So I click on that and I think, well, I want to read this at some point, okay, probably. So I go and it saves that and here's another blog and it's really quick. It takes just the text and the images, uh, none of the guff that's on a lot of these uh, news article websites and I can save these all now um, and here's an article. So what it will do is it will just take the center of this article. It won't take any of the text around the outside. And then I go over to my Insta paper and I can see here, this is my reading list now. This is what I want to read. And I can see articles that I've read here in the past as well. And what it does is it sends a little digest of these to my Kindle. So let's take a look at that. So here's what that looks like on my Kindle. This digest that it sends through is fantastic. Firstly, what I really like is instead of physically putting the articles on here, it sends you this as one document, but with each of the articles as a different section of that document. So I can see here some blog posts that I wanted to read in a news article. And this is um, Neil Armand's fantastic blog about how he teaches maths lessons. So I can go here and I can read. It transfers the pictures, not always perfectly, but usually, you know, considering this is on a Kindle uh, in, a, in a way that's good enough to see. And if they don't transfer onto here, I just open up um, Instapaper on my computer or on my iPad and I can see it there. I'll read the articles um, and then I can also highlight what's going on here. And this is going to be really crucial to the next step that we're going to look at because the app that we look at there takes all of this from the Kindle or takes it from highlighting and notes in Instapaper itself um, and puts it all in one place. Then I also use the Kindle as well, and it's a Kindle Oasis. It's a real, you know, again, I've always liked reading actual books, but you can't carry six or seven books around at a time. Um, it's not great to keep printing out articles that you want to read. Um, I don't particularly like reading on my phone. So I invested in a really nice Kindle, the Kindle Oasis. It has this incredible warm light, which makes it perfect for reading when it is dark. And when it's December, obviously it's dark quite a lot. So I read on the train in the morning, I get the 550 train and I can read on my Kindle because it's nice and uh, bright, but also nice and warm. Read in bed, uh, read on the train on the way home. Um, and so books here, they look great. They're nicely formatted. I can choose the font size and things like that. But again, it's this ability to highlight, and this is gonna come in really important in the next couple of steps, uh, in terms of both note-taking and in terms of keeping track of what you're reading. I also like the fact that you can search. 
for terms here. Um, inside your books, you can also see individual chapters and things like that. And the Kindle's come a long way. So if you haven't used the Kindle for a while, it might be worth getting hold of one and seeing if it is a good way for you to do some digital reading. Okay, so here's my iPad and I'm just going to quickly show you how I do note taking on my iPad. There's kind of two types of reading that I might do. So this is the Instapaper app. Um, if I was reading something that was a bit more of a news article or a blog article, I would tend to just read it and then I would highlight sections of it that I thought were important. I'll show you what happens to those highlights in a minute. Um, if I was going to make notes on this, it might just be a couple of bullet points in um, a notebook that I'm using. Uh, it's unlikely that I make really lengthy notes on a, on a blog article or a news article or anything like that. Instead, if I'm reading something more substantial, so if I'm reading a book and it's something that's important for work, that's when I do more in-depth note-taking. So for this, I use Good Notes, and I absolutely love Good Notes, and I'll make a Good Notes video at some point. Um, it's a brilliant note-taking app that is the closest thing that I can get as someone who really appreciates pen and paper to the experience of note-taking well, with pen and paper. It uh, gives you the option of doing Cornell notes, which I've always really enjoyed. Combined with the Apple Pencil and with a matte screen protector, it really does feel pretty close to the experience of writing in a notebook. And there's actually benefits, you know, like being able to erase what you're writing, having what you're writing become searchable, shareable, um, putting it into a PDF. All of that makes this a better approach than having, what, a half a dozen notebooks on the go at any one point. Uh, with your scribble notes in them that aren't indexed. So here, this is my work CPD, my professional development notebook. And you can see this is one of the books that I'm reading at the moment. And what I might do is I might have my Kindle out and I might sit at a desk and I might use the Kindle um, because I really like the screen on this for reading and make notes on my iPad. But because the iPad has such a brilliant, huge screen, which I absolutely love, um, I can actually get the Kindle app up on the right hand side or if it's not something that I've bought on Amazon it could just be a PDF uh, on the right hand side it could just be a different app that allows me to read EPUBs and here you can see I can read almost as if that's same sort of width as my phone and because I use A5 paper which is a bit smaller than average on my GoodNotes notes it means that I'm able to actually take full size notes on the left hand side whilst reading on the right hand side without the need to magnify so that's really handy for if I'm taking the train to work or if I am, not that I would be at the moment, but maybe sat in a cafe or something like that, and I wanted to use this as a note-taking device. The next step, of course, is what happens to all these notes and highlights? How do I keep them all in one place um, and make sure that I'm actually going to do things based on what I'm reading and what I'm writing here? And that's what I'm going to show you now. So the first thing I do with my notes, well, maybe it's the last thing I do with my notes, but it kind of proves that I'm not quite over pen and paper yet, is GoodNotes is great. You just export your notes as a PDF, and then you can literally print them out, hole punch them, and keep them all in one place. So you have a physical copy of those notes at the same time as having a digital copy. Maybe this is nostalgia on my part, I don't know, but I really like having that physical copy. Okay, so the next part I want to show you is my knowledge base, which is kind of a work in progress on Notion, um, and show you the way that I take the notes and the highlights that I've made and put them into a place that's easily accessible and easily searchable. Then I'm going to talk to you about actually implementing these things in my professional life. So here it is. Stunning, isn't it? I mean, it's currently two pages, but it's a work in progress and it's something that I'm going to focus on over the next couple of weeks. This was one of the first pages I made in Notion, and it was just a notes library for my professional development reading. So, for example, I uh, saw this talk by Christine Council about history planning. Um, I made a note of where it was, and I can insert the URL here to find it again if I need to. And these are the notes that I've exported from GoodNotes. And for me, a huge game changer in terms of moving from a physical notebook like this that's full of page after page of, you know, admittedly nice notes, but they're not searchable, they're not indexed, they're not, I'm not necessarily going to remember everything that's in here. These are my notes from that. Good notes allows me to type in questions, even with my janky handwriting, and find it. Say I wanted to find where I'd written about depth in these pages of notes. Now, in three pages of notes, that's quite handy, but when I'm reading a book and I'm writing 20 pages of notes, game changer. Furthermore, GoodNotes will allow you to search through all of your notes. 
So if I want to find references to say curriculum in all my notes, I go into the Good Notes app and I can search for it and it will come up. And you know, my handwriting is not the worst, but it's not the best. The handwriting recognition is great. And I can even copy text from here and paste it into other documents, paste it into a note taking app, paste it into Notion if I needed to. So that's the brilliance of Good Notes for me is making your notes search. OK, so the next thing for me is Readwise, and I absolutely love Readwise. It's an app that automates a process that would otherwise be really time consuming and probably not something that I would get around to doing very often. And that's taking quotes and highlights from Kindle, but also from other apps and services as well, or quotes and highlights that you manually input yourself um, and keeping them all in one place. And it has an export to Notion function, which is fantastic for a Notion nerd like me. So this is what Readwise looks like. Uh, you connect it to various different services to import. So for example, here I've got it connected to Kindle and Instapaper, uh, Twitter and the podcasting app Air that I use. So it imports all of the um, highlights from there and it syncs daily or I can do manually sync as well. Um, and then it gives you a daily review. And I love this as a teacher because it's actually an example of spaced retrieval, which is the idea that, you know, our short term memory and our long term memory, they're not the most efficient things in the world. And we forget what we read um, if we don't review this after time, you know, the forgetting curve. So here it shows me a daily review of five or so quotes that I've looked at, for, uh, that I've highlighted in books. And it could be from last week or it could be from a year ago. That's how long you've been using this. Um, it gives me the chance to favourite these, to tag them. Um, I can get rid of them if it's not a quote that I think is particularly useful. I read it and I keep it. Next, um, it takes it into Notion for me. So here is the book that I've been reading, uh, The Research Gu Ed Guide to Leadership. I like that it brings in the image of the cover from Kindle. It tells me where I can find it, URL, everything's imported there. But this, it brings in all the quotes that you make and it syncs it daily. And I absolutely love that. I think it's fantastic. So I can see at a glance these quotes. And when I'm writing a blog, I will literally just take these and I'll paste them into the blog article that I'm reading and writing as inspiration or to use as direct quotes. And it's fantastic. I mean, it really does change what you're doing with your reading. So that's the basis of my kind of knowledge base of my note taking now is having those PDF notes from good notes that are searchable and having all of these quotes and things here uh, in one place. And then the last step, and this for me is the real important step, and that's implementation. And I heard a fantastic talk the other day. Uh, David Weston uh, was talking at the National Inset Day about how to actually make professional development worthwhile, because if we're not implementing what we learn, if we're not changing our professional lives by the reading that we do, then it's just reading for pleasure. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But we can't claim it to be some great professional development. So when I'm reading now, when I hear a talk, I go in and I make an implementation page on the Notion notes. So here I've imported my PDF notes. And then when I've had the time, I've gone back through and I've made a note of everything that I want to implement in my professional life. And again, I've done it here with this other talk that I heard the other day. This is about modelling and practice. So something really practical I can use in the classroom. And what I can do is I can even convert these using Notion into a to-do list, into tick boxes. And I can say, yeah, I've tried that. I've tried this. Then I can click on it and I can say, turn into a sub page and I can make further notes on it like that. And that's the real benefit of Notion. It's so powerful to be using it as a knowledge base. Now, obviously, you don't have to use Notion for this. You could use any of the other productivity apps that are out there, like Trello. Um, you could even do this in a physical form with notebooks and whatnot. I've gone from having dozens of notebooks on the go at the same time, um, from really struggling to keep track of what I've read and what's important and what the takeaways are, to having a really systematic approach to reading. Um, this is something that I want to develop over the next few weeks and months, so hopefully I'll come back to it again in another video. Um, I'd love to know if you have any questions about this or if you're curious about anything, any specific part of it that I can go into more detail about. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and that you've found it useful. Please do like and subscribe. This is a new channel, a new venture for me. Um, so it's really important in the first early stages of this to get that engagement on the video. So I'd really appreciate that. Do check out my other video, which is about uh, using Notion as a teacher planner, if you're interested in productivity and things like that. And it's been really great to speak to you today. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye bye.